forms you know what we're talking about because we were already talking about it last time that we met when we were talking about Jomiro but this time this time we're talking about another artist who is actually a good friend of Jomiro's his name is Jean Arp now Jean Arp he's another artist that's not so well known, but he's in very, very influential. He was really one of the best artists of the turn of the century. We're talking about a hundred years ago or so. So stay with me on this. Jean and Hams, two names, because he was actually from Strasbourg. Now Strasbourg was a place that first it was Germany, then it became France, then it became Germany, then it became France again. So you had to have two names. So uh, basically, Jean is what I call him when he, actually he became a French citizen. So in any case, Jean Arp, what he was interested in were those biomorphic forms. But you know what? He was also um, incredibly interested in abstraction. Now, you remember what abstraction is. Okay, it's something that you are creating that has absolutely nothing to do with what the person who's going to look at your artwork is going to have any kind of memory about. So you're making absolutely something new. Now, the works of Jean Arp, as you can see, are somewhat different, or somewhat actually similar to those of Jean Miro. You can see that sort of biomorphic germ-like virus moving blobs that move across the surface. In fact, he was fascinated with these, with these natural forms that were evolving right in front of your eyes. So the idea of biomorphic forms is extremely important because it means something that is always changing, something that is always new. Okay, so imagine, imagine this modern artist that was looking at these biomorphic forms. And the biomorphic forms, as we already know, are very liquid, are very organic. Now, try to imagine a form like that, that suddenly, that suddenly becomes sculpture. It suddenly becomes 3D. It suddenly becomes something that you can pick up and that you can touch. Now, this is very odd because that means something that has never been seen before. Okay, so imagine, imagine Jean Arp's uh, sculptures, okay? So it's just like his paintings, they're very incredible, that this biomorphic form, very simple, very, very soft, very uh, imaginary, suddenly becomes sculpture. And that's something that I want to propose today, okay? This is our new project. We can make a Jean Arp, sculpture 
But how? Well, let me show you. These are the materials we're going to use. Marble. Hey, Dad, do you have some marble? Bring it. No, we're not going to use marble. We're not going to use stone. We're not going to use precious materials. We're going to use socks. Socks, socks, socks. Check out the socks. Okay, socks. Everyone has socks in their drawers. Does this ever happen to you? Why? For some mysterious reason, I put this in the washing machine and only one came back. So, what we're talking about are odd socks. Socks and socks. So, this is what we're going to use as our precious, precious material to create a Jean Arp sculpture. Let me show you how. Okay, the first thing you need to do is choose the right sock. First of all, find a sock. If it's okay with your mom and your dad and with everyone else, make sure that these socks are the ones that, you know, are basically rags. So, you, first of all, you don't want socks with holes in them. And you don't want socks that smell. And you don't want socks that are all dirty. You want socks that are in good shape and that you're probably never ever going to wear again. They can be small. They can be big. They can be white. They can be green. They can be any color that you can imagine. But try not to use stripes and stars and bunnies and helicopters and power rangers. Try to keep your sock very simple, very normal, okay? Because this is what is going to make our sculpture very elegant. Okay, the question is, how can I transform this old solitary sock into a masterpiece of modern art like Jean Arp? Well, let me show you. What you're going to need, first of all, is your sock. Second of all, a nice pile of newspapers. Okay, this is all that you're going to need from the beginning. Now, what is going to happen now is going to be probably one of the most important parts, but not so difficult. You'll see. First, what you're going to need to do is start to take a piece of newspaper, roll it up, ball it up, turn it into a ball, and then pack it tight, 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 tight and tight. Put it here. Make another one. More newspaper. Wrap it into a ball. Tight, tight, and tight. Then, all you have to do is begin to stuff your sock with the newspaper ball. As tight as you can. Now you need to think about it. You want your sock to become sort of this biomorphic form. So you need to think about, okay, I've got a one ball of newspaper this big. The next one is going to be even bigger. But then another one is going to be small. And then a little small one, and then a little small one. For example, if I take this one, this is going to be a little teeny one. Pack it in nice and tight. Shove it down into the bottom of your sock. And you push it in like this. And you take the other one. And you push it in like this. And pretty soon, you're going to be making a biomorphic form.
Okay, here we are. That wasn't that easy, was it? And it's surprising how much as an old sock can hold as far as old newspapers go. You can wrinkle up a whole bunch and actually an entire newspaper can fit inside. So, especially one of my socks. So here we are at this, at this point now. Remember that Jeanard, his artwork was very simple. It was all about forms that were very, very elegant and very soft and very simple. So we don't need to worry about something complicated. Now, the next step and the next things that you're actually going to need are going to be, well, like this box, the sewing box. Everyone probably has in their home a, a box of various sewing materials like string and like yarn and thread and things like that. So what the next step is, is that we need to find something that is going to be able to uh, be very similar to what we are working with. So I think out of all of these, I'm going to find, oh, just a minute, where did that go? Here's one, like this, some thread, okay? And if you don't have thread, which is usually what is used for sewing, you can also use string, or you can use heavier string like this, but I prefer this because it's invisible. It's something that will make your sculpture look like it was actually sculpted out of stone and out of marble. This is the way it works. So you take your thread and you hold it still. And now what you want to do is you want to start to single out where those balls of paper were. And you want to start to pull it tight. And so you go around it and around it and around it and around it. And you want to sculpt out those forms that you made out of paper down to the next ball of paper that's in there. I can feel it. And you go, and you go, and you go. Then down to the next one. And you turn it around, and you turn it around. Turn it around, and you turn it around. Now, this is sort of the hard part. But like I said, nothing is easy, right? Art especially. So you need to pick up the loose ends and you need to be able to tie it into a knot. Okay? And you pull it into the knot and make sure that everything is nice and snug. That is the way that we're going to make the different forms come out and turn into a sculpture. Okay, once you get to the bottom of your sculpture, it's probably a good idea to sort of twist it off at the end, like a balloon. And then, you know these, these are twisties that you use for the bread sacks. Okay, those are pretty common, so you should have those in your kitchen. So this is a good way for the moment, temporarily, to close it off, twist it off. So then that way, there you have it. You have the beginning of a biomorphic sculpture of Jean Arp. Okay, doing the sock sculpture, that was actually the easy part. Now, the hard part is this. You need to make what you just made with your sock sculpture into an actual art object. Now, by doing that, you need to create a base that you can put the art object on top of because we are going to run into the same problem that Jean Arp had. You know that he was one of the first sculptors to create abstract art, to create abstract sculpture. And his problem was that if you look at abstract sculpture and you look around like this tabletop here, for example, where is the art object? This is the problem. In fact, if we take our art object, here it is. If you don't remove the art object from its environment and you put it into a special situation where it's very, 
precious and all of the attention is put on it, then nobody will understand that the object itself is art. Okay, here's the tricky part. Now, how do we convert this, which just is basically a sock and a blob, into a fine art object? We need to make a stand, an art stand, which can be out of all of these various different boxes that I'm sure that you have in your, in your house somewhere. So it can be a shoe box, it can be any type of box, or it can be a container like this, for example. Or it can be even a jar or a tin can. It depends because your sock, you need to kind of carefully consider what kind of stand it needs to look like an actual object of art. Something that big or something like that. Something like this, I don't think so. Or something like that, hmm, I don't know. It depends very much on your own sock. So, like I said, I'm not going to resolve all, all, resolve all of your problems. You need to do that yourself. You need to think about it and be careful on what type of box or surface that you can use in order to present your sock sculpture, in order to make it transform into a work of art. Okay, let's go over this one more time, just to make sure that we've got our ideas straight. What we're about to make is a sculpture, an abstract sculpture. Now, if our abstract sculpture is just lying on the table like this, it's a blob. As soon as I put it into a stand, I remove it from the context of ordinary objects and I make it into something very special. Now, it's a work of art. Blob. Work of art. Don't go and try to turn your a sculpture into a teddy bear or something like that because then it won't be abstract anymore okay so you want to keep it very simple very elegant and very abstract the stand is this this is a stand and the stand can be a lot of different things made out of different different boxes that you have in the kitchen Things like this can be converted into stands. Let me show you a couple examples. For example, this stand. All I had to do was cut out a hole out of the box. And then my sculpture just sort of snugly fits into it. Or this, which is equally as nice, which is a little black sock, which I particularly like. It was a little teeny, teeny sock. And this one is made out of just a yogurt cup, as you can see. In fact, inside, if you open it up, you can see in the back, this is where the part comes out. And I wrapped some wire around to hold it still. Okay, so that way, that looks like a sculpture. Or this one. This, another simple little sock, which was put onto a tin can. The tin can, of course, I, pung, I punched a hole and put a stick through it. And so then I stuck it into the middle. So you need to be creative here. You need to maybe ask dad, ask your mom of what they think. What would be a good solution? Where can I put this? For example, this one, was a box where there's a pencil. And you know what I did here? This was actually kind of a good idea. I used the last ball that went into my sock, like here. I wrapped it around a pencil. And the pencil can actually go through, let's pretend this is our box. 
it can go through our box like this. And then we can take a piece of cardboard like this, one and two, and glue it all together so that this will stay. And so that will give us the effect of this. Also consider the fact that this box can be painted white, or it can also be with different strips of paper, like this, and a little bit of glue. You can turn it into some, into a white box, much like this one. Okay, so think about it. Think about the different possibilities. Even this was painted white with a little bit of white paint that I found in the cantina in the basement. second uh, episode of abstract sock sculpture in the style of Franz Arp. I hope you had a good one. Also, I want to make one more note. Um, my cameraman, which is Tazio Kastelic. Can you go like this? Thank you so much for all of your help. We'll see you next time.